Now I'm going to be speaking about what's been going on in Turkey over the past two weeks. I grew up in, uh, despite having an Irish father and uh, a birth certificate that puts me, has me coming from New Jersey, I grew up in Istanbul. I went to an international school, primary school, and then I went to a private um, kind of elite school um, run by Americans. Um, but Turkey at that point uh, was a republic created, or well, still is a republic created by a top-down revolution. And the architect was Ataturk. Uh, the country was getting divided up after the Ottoman Empire uh, went into uh, World War I on, on the side of, uh, on the other side, if you like. And he got together a ragtag army and uh, won back what we now call the Republic of Turkey. And then in, the, in a matter of years, he just transformed it into a westward-looking um, republic. He uh, severed the connections between the state and, and religion, changed the calendar, changed the alphabet, and changed the succeeded in starting a language revolution that has resulted in the ethnic cleansing of, uh, of the language itself so that uh, it, lost, uh, it has lost 60% of its vocabulary. And over and above that, of course, we had the other story that wasn't being told in class that was going on around our eyes and that I was uh, you know, indirectly implicated in, which was there were 17 US bases in Turkey for the first decades of the Cold War, and uh, there was American military everywhere to fight communism. And in the name of fighting communism, uh, they would smash uh, dissent. And so the 1971 coup which, uh, in which many of my classmates were imprisoned and, <clears throat> and tortured and temporarily broken, <clears throat> that was done at the behest of the US. And uh, the much more brutal 1980 coup, which um, you know, put uh, many of my um, uh, friends, many of my, uh, my generation, right through it again and, and completely smashed all forms of dissent, including trade unions and so on and so forth. That was very much done with the collusion of the US and uh, the most important thing I have to tell you about this is that uh, that happened in 1980. The first uh, time that it was, had any profile in, in the media here was 1985. That's the kind of control of information that, that, that Turkey uh, has uh, depended on, the Turkish state, and that uh, uh, is the kind of silence that uh, the UK and the US in particular have colluded in. The other thing to know about Turkey, and this is throughout the story I'm telling you, is that there's a very, very, very strong tradition of under-the-radar dissent. Uh, it starts with the great uh, you know, poet Nazim Hikmet, who was in prison most of his life, but he ran schools inside the prison. Um, uh, they're very, very, uh, it's very creative, and it's uh, not just about keeping up resistance, but keeping up, um, uh, keeping people laughing. Laughing is a very, very important part of it. The AKP is Islamist, it's neoliberal market, you know, pro-market, and when it first came in, it had an alliance with the, uh, the democratic left because it was anti-militarist. Um, but basically through the army, all the top brass of the uh, military services are now in prison on a, um, terrorism charges. The moment the military was uh, no longer uh, you know, the, the, the big force in, um, in Turkey, uh, the Erdogan and the AKP started getting much more aggressive, but this is mostly Erdogan. What he's been doing over the past few years, one of his main targets have been universities. There's been a huge expansion over a generation in education, and these are places where uh, students educate themselves. They educate themselves on the Kurdish issue, they educate themselves on the Armenian issue, and they're uh, activists in absolute uh, in the environment and all forms of, of grassroots democracy. Uh, Erdogan has been throwing students into prison uh, in the hundreds and thousands, actually, uh, swooping down on people because they're wearing a Kurdish scarf uh, or for attending a, uh, a demonstration on mother tongue, on, on the right to a mother tongue. Kurdish language is not quite banned now, but it's sort of still banned. It's been banned. It was banned for a long time. Last summer, I knew something was going to blow because um, it was because the students are, you know, there are many more of them. Uh, they're more connected. They're more enlightened. Uh, they understand all of these, uh, this wide range of issues. They, and particularly since uh, the great uh, Turkish Armenian journalist, um, Hrant Dink, assassinated a number of years ago, his message was it's not just about the Armenians, it's about democracy. It's about uh, the state mechanisms now controlled by Erdogan, which are authoritarian. 
and uh, we, we deserve better for ourselves. And it's a new form of democratic action that they're inventing every single day. Now, uh, the, if I were going to um, talk about the things that you know, I remember um, most uh, from my other sources of news, it would be uh, you know, Gezi Park before the attacks because that was uh, being streamed and until they shut those things down. It's the attacking of uh, a television, um, uh, you know, the Turkish television uh, vehicles because they um, colluded with Erdogan and they didn't run a single thing. Uh, if you can believe it, there was nothing on Turkish television, nothing on Turkish television except for one teeny tiny uh, uh, television uh, station called Halk TV. I also um, remember the, on the first day of the attacks of Gezi Park, um, you know, the man shouting at the, uh, the, uh, the Tomas, the, you know, the water carrier uh, tanks, and getting um, flipped over under the, the current of the water, and I think he was one of the people who died. There was the uh, not uh, much you know, talked about, but not uh, uh, you know, much shown uh, film of uh, 45 lawyers uh, being arrested in the Palace of Justice when they were doing a very orderly uh, protest about you know and lawyers and judges and they being dragged out in their you know in their ropes. If you have that sort of information to watch what's coming out on the Western media, uh, correspondents going in there. If they first arrive, they keep on saying it's about Islam, isn't it? It's about Islam, and people say no, no, no. It's about authoritarianism. The film I haven't seen yet, which is what was happening in Taksim and Gezi Park last night. This was televised a little bit on the BBC, and because of that. There was a little AKP demonstration in front of the BBC headquarters in, in Istanbul this week uh, calling um, the BBC Nazi. Okay? Um, but the, the film that I want to uh, find for you is uh, a Turkish-German uh, uh, pianist got a baby grand, put it right next to the, the monument to Ataturk, uh, to, the, uh, to the revolution, if you like, and, uh, and played this heartbreakingly wonderful music and everybody was watching, but the riot police were there, and the riot police were crying. Um, these, uh, so they're they're very, very much uh, inventing uh, new ways of keeping things going. My particular responsibility is uh, the Western media. Um, sometimes they get it wrong because they just don't have enough background. But all too often, they're colluding with the Foreign Office and the State Department, and I feel. Um, particularly ashamed about those two things. And I think there are things that we can do, mostly by carrying on, uh, you know, finding uh, new ways to use social media to carry on kind of more thoughtful conversations. And I hope that uh, later on, you might have some ideas for me. Uh, thank you very much.